Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Chad Smith Podcast. My name is Chad Smith, and today is Thursday, June 23rd, 2022. And today, I'm joined by three awesome guests from California. Please welcome back Sonny Conway, Spooky Morales, and Eric from Paranormal Highway. Some of you saw me last night. Hey, (laughs) hey. Eric has been streaming for 24 hours solid. Yeah. (laughs) Sure seems like it, huh? Oh, we got Deanna Conway. How's it going? Good morning. Decon. Decon. More it does babe. sound way more official. Decon. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, our guest today is having some internet issues and some StreamYard issues, so he's going to be joining us as soon as he gets to his location. He's in uh, transit right now, but as soon as he gets to his location, he's going to work on his phone a little bit more and see if he can come on in here with us. We really want to have a conversation with him because this dude's awesome. Look so we're that. gonna keep trying for him, but until then we'll probably just uh, morning, Christina. Hang out and chat about Star Wars, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever oh. else we can get into. Well, that's not gonna inspire any hate in the community. <laughs> <laughs> we could just give spoilers. No, definitely shouldn't do that. No. Well, there's, technically, there's really no spoilers. I mean, you know who lives and dies. I mean, mm-hmm. otherwise, you won't have an episode four of the movies. <laughs> who would have never only that? one lives through this. So that's how this works. Is it's it's still in the same timeline as the the movies? It's Ten right years. before A New Hope, episode four. So it's a pre. It's technically right after the uh, uh, the prequel movies, the one, two, and three. So it's between three and four. It's right in the middle. Oh, okay. See, Star Wars can't go forward. They always gotta do backwards. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. maybe one day in the future we'll see a whole brand new story where there's no main connections with any stars, you know, just a whole brand new story, but who knows? Who knows? Even if they make a brand new story, someone will be building a new Death Star in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, the, uh, uh, the director, Tahiti, the one who made the last two Thor movies, is supposed to be making a Star Wars movie that it is a brand new story going forward in the future, so hopefully it's in the works. Can we see something new? I mean, yes. Yoda, baby Yoda, they're all cute, but sometimes, like, you know, we see Leia, we see Luke, we see everybody, we see Hulk, Han Solo. Give me a brand new story. Yeah. Something new. I want to see, I want to see a Star Wars strip club or something, you know? Show me something that I haven't seen. A Star Wars strip club? Think about it, you know? A uh, man and woman dancing with four boobs or something, you know? <laughs> I mean, who would not want to see something Dude, like that? That's a good question. Does Star Wars ever have uh, an R-rated movie? Has have they done that yet? No, no. Are they in the plans? They're never going to do that. Probably. With I Disney. doubt it. It's remember, it's owned by Disney now. Disney yeah. will never do an R-rated mm. because you know technically George has always said his movies was meant for young people, you know, for kids yeah. to be inspired. So, you know. Hmm. Would be neat, right, to see like an R-rated bloodbath kind of a movie. I mean, that would be. I'd be well, down I was wondering. For it. I was wondering because since Disney owns, excuse me, since they own Marvel now, and didn't they come out with some really? I don't know. Maybe I'm blanking on. Well, no, they haven't made anything R except they are going to be making a Deadpool three, which is going to be rated R. But what they're going to do is they're not going to put the Disney banner. They're going to put it under the Fox banner because they own Fox. Oh, so, isn't that convenient that you can just throw whatever logo you want up there? <laughs> yeah, we own Fox, we own Disney, we own Pixar. I think they own Pixar now. Yep, that's interesting. Spooky, I really like your shirt you're wearing there, sporting the unidentified S4 shirt. Yeah, I just feel like the theme song should be playing as we say that. <laughs> Every time we hear it. <laughs> and Spooky, don't you have an awesome coffee cup? Yeah, let's see that thing. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this. It's only the <laughs> best show on YouTube. The Paranormal Highway. Look how shiny that looks. 
That is sweet looking. Thank That's you. awesome. Wrap around logo you got there. Oh, yeah. there's a Sasquatch. I just need to put some coffee in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where's the coffee? <laughs> hey, you know Kashi, Chris. You, you know what I hate? <laughs> you? you know, I got my cup yesterday, right? And, and I opened it up. And you know how they put barcode stickers, right? They put the barcode sticker inside the cup. And when you try oh. to get that off, it, like, leaves that glue. You try to rub that glue I was thinking the off. same thing. Yes. I had to put, like, vinegar, try to rub it, rub it off. And it's like, who can't they put it on the bottom of the cup? Well, on the bottom of the cup, they let us know it was made in China. So well, that's the first insult. Well, then on the yeah, inside, the they put this little... Sticker. Yeah, but, and you got to take but, that off, and it's not easy to clean off the, the adhesive. No, because I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink glue. <laughs> I think they're trying to kill us, man. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to huff glue, not drink it. <laughs> I mean, I, I buy a lot of cups oh in the past where you could just take off the sticker, but this one was on there. You had to take your thumb. And like it's <laughs> weird that it's inside the cup. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is. It, 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 it's weird. That's a good point. And yeah, I've tried shit like rubbing alcohol and everything else. It's hard to get that stupid glue off of there, out, out from under the sticker, <laughs> off, off the outside bullshit. or inside of a cup. Dude, after I rubbed it, like, okay, maybe I'll put in the dishwasher in the heat. We'll get it off, and, and the dishwasher's done. I was like, oh, God, it's still there. And when you rub it, you leave your dirt on it and whatever. <laughs> You're like, just drink it. Prassel, so the Elmer's <laughs> gives me an indigestion. <laughs> What's, what's up, up Roach? Good to see you, man. Actually, what's up, everybody? Enzo, Kashi, Chris, yeah, everyone's Cassie, in here. Janelle. Oh, yeah, I gotta play the uh, the S Sweet Lee theme Bear, song. Sweet Bear. I've seen some of you guys over on Amy's channel. Alien Girl. That's one, who I would like one, to interview. One. Sweetly Morbid Bear. Morning. Yeah. Oh, we got our guest back. Oh, it looks man. like it's working. Oh man. Oh, what's stuff, up, dude? Man. How's it going, Nate? It's finally work. What's going on, fellas? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Oh, don't be sorry, dude. Good You're fine. Tonight. Sam, good morning. <laughs> we run into a lot of technical difficulties on this show, Nate. You're all good, man. <laughs> Appreciate so, that. Just excited to talk to you, dude. We got uh we got a couple people in here that are big time horror film fans, so there they we heard go. You were coming on, they had to join. Oh, I love it. So you got horror <laughs> movies coming out August twentieth. Is this going to be like something we you, you, you catch on a streaming service, or will it actually be in a couple theaters? Uh so right now we're uh, doing a, a theater release. I, I know we're going to do the Raisin Center, um, and then kind of have some things for. Uh, a few local drive-ins. My big thing is I would, I would really like to start marketing to um, kind of like these old classic theaters that are in these small to mid-sized Midwestern towns that are kind of dying out right now. But for a one-night horror event or a few nights a week or something like that, it, it almost is the perfect venue in all of these type of towns. And um, I'm sure we'll go to a streaming service afterwards. I don't think I'll I'll do YouTube with a full feature. Um, but then, you know, if, it, if it's going to be a full feature and a, a finished product, I think we're going to probably try to put a little bit more elbow grease into um, getting it in front of yeah. some bigger networks and see what we can do there. Yeah, forget the Midwest. Put it on the West Coast. The West Coast. Yeah, <laughs> so I can say, yeah you know yeah, what? Come on, we're the horror people. You, Eric, you remember the Madeira Drive-In? That's still open. Yes. We need to hit Madeira Drive-In up. Oh, I miss the drive-in days where you put people in the trunk, you drive in, so you pop <laughs> out. But they would charge. They were charged by the person, so you used to hide people in. And then, uh, yep. uh, when we were a kid, you know, we, the winter snitchels. They used on Sundays. They used to have chili dogs for forty-nine cents for Sunday. <laughs> uh -huh. We go buy yeah. like twenty chili dogs, yes. go on the drive-in, and just sit, you know, and yeah. People jumped the yeah, fence. Man. There was one. There's a drive in used to be on. There used to be two drives in Fresno. One on Blackstone, near one end, and I forget where the other one was. But, but so man, sad. in a long time they used to have barbecues. Where then they took away <laughs> the barbecues, you know, because they want to sell their food. But the yeah. drive in was the best way to see a movie, you know. But it always sucks, right? When you go to the drive in, the first 10, 20 minutes is still a little bit in the daylight. And then yep. once it gets dark, then you can actually see it. But the whole experience is great. And the yep. the the the, uh, the double feature is always an older movie, but still, it's pitch dark. 
by the time that comes on, man, I would love to see a good horror movie. I, I remember to... back in the day, they used to play rated R at Drive-In. We went to see um, – I think my parents took us to see uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, the drive-in. As a kid, that movie's freaking boring. As a kid. As a kid. <laughs> and, then, and then right over on the other screen, they had Porky's on. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then, there was that cool. famous shower oh, scene. You're like, you're like, holy shit, what is that? The drive -in. I'm boring movie. What is the, that? The drive-in drive that Eric's talking movie. about. And it's on the end of the strip of Blackstone. That one's right by the freeway, Chad. Yeah. And when you're driving by, you can just see like 50 foot tall titties. <laughs> yeah. On the screens and face of the freeway. Yeah. It's funny. Drivers will never do that now. They won't do something rated R if there's any drivers left. We have one up here in Washington that's left. Dad, I'm going to go see that movie. <laughs> I That's miss awesome. those days. I haven't been to a drive-in, so this is all gibberish to me. I haven't been to a, haven't been to a drive-in. Well, yep. So you're, you're Nate. You're I gotta know where to go movie. around here. I live right you're by where you live, so. So your horror movie is in August. Where's where's your uh where you, where did you, what city and state that your horror movie is based out of? Is it Michigan? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to. My hometown is Monroe, Michigan, so I try to keep everything, um, you know. I don't know. It's just for sentimental purposes, kind of based out of there. Is this something that you had to a, a pay out of yourself, or did you actually get a company, like a, a studio, to kind of a back you on it? Oh no, this is all self-funded. Yeah, I haven't oh, received wow, any. Of that yeah. You do whatever you want with it. Nobody tells yeah, you what. To do. Did you direct it yourself, or did you just produce and, and put the money in? Uh direct and write. Direct it, produce oh, and wrote cool, it. Yeah. That's so cool, dude. Man. It's easy. You don't have anyone telling you what to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. You never Man, you've been doing a great job with promotions, too. I've seen you everywhere. I mean, before I booked you, <laughs> I didn't really see too much, but I saw like one news article and I'm like, man, I got to book him on the podcast. And then I saw that you had, we had a bunch of mutual friends together, like, uh, you know, the Eads family. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, yep. and uh, so I do too. And then I was like, "Man, I definitely need to get him on here." And then after that, all these guitars and, dr and like we used to play instruments when we were like really little kids. They live right around the corner from me, dude. Oh, sweet. they're good people. Yeah, 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 small world, man. That's crazy. Can we, can we get a hint on uh, what's it going to be about, or you got you want to save that for a trailer when you come out? Ooh. With it? Uh, no, no. So I can I can tell you a little bit. Uh, it's it's called the Soul Reaper, and it's basically about this ragtag group of individuals who uh, answer a flyer. So imagine like a uh, like an eighties punk group, uh, just kind of walking around the streets, being filthy, and they answer this flyer that calls for help uh, at a, a local haunted house. I mean, it's a little bit distance away, but uh, you know, it, basically they had to help clean it out and get it revamped for the Halloween season. And without saying too much. Basically, once they get there, um, I love the a slew of bad choices are made. <laughs> Thank you. Slew of bad choices are made, and that kind of brings out a uh, a lot of demonic activity. Did you have the story first, or did you like? I'm gonna make a movie, and I gotta write a story for the movie. What came first, the the story or the movie? Um, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, I knew. I wanted a something to do with a reaper, right? Like it, we wanted to do something creepy with a reaper, um, and then it was all about looking around us and seeing what we had um, kind of as resources to utilize. So, you know, Horror Town is a haunted house place, right? And it is it's up in Stagecoach Stop, which is an old Western town. So, it kind of goes hand in hand that we can film at a haunted house place. So maybe we can tie it in together like okay now these guys go out they answer a flyer and they have to you know make some weed money a couple dime bags you know no, nothing too much maybe like 50 bucks a day you know but it's cheap for them they're punks they don't even make you know they don't even have a real job to begin with so they're like oh hell yeah this is awesome perfect why not go work at a haunted house and get paid for it but they don't realize that it's probably the worst decision that they're going to make <laughs> but the best decision for us to go watch that's right well, absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah. Dude, that's so cool that when you, when I heard that you leased those buildings over there at the stagecoach stop, I was like blown away because I remember going there when I was a kid and riding the train around, and uh, yeah. I actually remember sitting all the way in the back and seeing these cowboys run up and grab onto the the car and like start shooting each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Let him explain that place to us, Chad. I've never been there. Yeah, I've yeah, never been absolutely. 
What what is this place yeah, no, that you're you're leasing? So so basically I've never um I don't know too much about I'm I've never been able to go to it when it was running. So all I've been able to hear is stories like from people saying, you know, hey, I remember going there when I was a kid. Oh, but wow. I guess it's, it, it was uh, – I don't even know the square footage. I know it's like 22 acres. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different buildings on the property all together, but it's basically a whole Old West-style town. So you'll go and there'll be like the saloon doors and the saloon bar, and they had a train, you know, like they it would take you for a ride around the whole park, and at some point you'd get robbed by the masked bandit. And at the end of the train ride, uh, usually, from what I've heard, you know, the bandit would be caught by the town sheriff or someone that was kind of uh, running as the law that day. And it was just like, you know, restaurants, uh, stores, pretty much like a, I don't know if you've ever been to Greenfield Village or any type of like museum village to where it's like outdoors and they have multiple properties you can walk in, but. It's kind of like that, and I walked through, and I'm like, dude, this is literally perfect for a horror town. And they had a courtyard that was like a little, um, you know, not really run down, but it was abandoned. It hasn't been, no one was there for like the last five or ten years. And I was like, dude, you know, I just, if I could lease this or get, you know, able to move stuff in here, paint it all black, this is literally the perfect place for like a town of horror. You need to keep it like a western theme town of horror, or is it just going to be... A haunted town. Half of it, yeah. Well, half of it is the old west stuff, and then the courtyard is really what's going to go all black, and that's going to look more or less like uh, the witches' houses in Salem, Massachusetts. But then everything else is going to be old west style still. What a project, damn! Yeah, that's so, pretty cool, though, man. <coughs> so it's like a- it's fun. it's a different vibe there when you're alone at night. That's for sure. Oh, I can imagine. I went there one. <laughs> I went there one night when they had the uh, the haunted. You could just drive your car through it. It was like a haunted. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. All that, but oh, that's cool. The dance hall is still there. I'm just looking at all these pictures. <laughs> but yeah, I went through there and it was kind of comical. I didn't get scared at all, but it was definitely an experience to drive through there. And it was like twenty bucks a car load or something. Wow. Yeah, just something. Just a quick little Halloween thing, but you know, like. I don't know. We're st- that's still going to happen this year. The drive-through uh, haunted house and like the indoor haunted house. It's oh, it's just more or less like putting a lot more energy into making it cooler. I think that Willie Nelson has cool. a town like that. Kind of reminds me of old Sacramento because they have like a cowboy section mm-hmm. in, in yeah. sac- old town Sacramento. I, I agree, Eric. Dude, that souvenir booklet is awesome. Souvenir booklet of the stagecoach stop, thirty-five cents. <laughs> this is gonna be like an all year round type of deal. Yeah. Yep. So that's gonna be like, nice. like in Gettysburg. I used to live next to Gettysburg, and they would dress in Civil War outfits all year round. Are you planning to have people like here to dress up some kind of paranormal all year round? Oh yeah, I uh, I'm trying to get multiple. Uh, my plan is to have multiple people, multiple people, uh, women especially, walking around the property on like a. You know, late Victorian era dresses, all black, kind of like an old witchy style feel. Um, so you're not really sure if you're seeing a ghost or if that's a person in outfit or what the case is. Yeah. Um, I want to move there. But it's gonna set the <laughs> I'll, I'll take that I, little shed on top. I'll live in. Park. It's gonna relocate, <laughs> dude. Nate the, funny thing. Here, <laughs> Nate, the funny thing is, is these guys are all from California, so they're always like bougieing it up they're like oh yeah it's 75 degrees and sunny oh you guys yeah. have rain it's not raining well, here exactly. we don't have any rain <laughs> and now I like, buy a, a, a horror town on the west coast it's way too expensive I, that's I right think we, yeah. we need a major fund me account <laughs> now i'm like i live right i live like 20 minutes from a horror town Eat that now <laughs> right dude more than welcome every day awesome dude that's gonna be fun no i, I noticed wait. that nate you know Sometimes I'm going to the East Coast because my wife's family's from New York, and we'll go up to Canada. And Canada has a lot of haunted houses versus in America. It's like they embrace it, and they have some real haunted houses. I mean, people, like you said, jump out at you and try to scare you. And Michigan, of course, is close to Canada. So w- what is it with Canada and stuff like, like really wants to go all out on haunted houses versus in America? Because, you know, we only get haunted houses maybe during Halloween time. 
But you're talking about right. having something all year round like Canada does. That, I mean, that's exciting. Yeah, I'm not really, you know, I think there just might not be much going on up in Canada, you know. I think it's <laughs> – <Yeah>. uh, they, <laughs> Man, they just yeah, needed yeah. something to get the old ticker going, you know. But uh, for the most part, I think people up this way, you know, Michigan, Pennsylvania, those parts of Canada, Ohio, really, you know, New, New Jersey even, this section of the world and more uh, specifically honed in this section of the United States is really kind of like um, the Omeka for horror in general. Like I know, the you know, the West Coast – is all about movie making, but when it comes to horror, I really feel like it's centralized, maybe even more in Pennsylvania, and then kind of spread out uh, in like a circle format around there. But it's just something about this East Coast or this Midwestness, man. It's just people like to be scared. I don't know. That's true. Well, that's, that's cool. Where? How did you get the idea to do it tw- like 365 days a year instead of just around Ooh. the Halloween time? Well, people want to go to a place right now and. But nobody, it's not open. You know what I mean? And uh, people, sure. I want to go places in January, February, and March. And but mm-hmm. literally, unless you're trying to drive to like New York for the Wax Museum or you know Salem or, uh, I mean, really, that there ain't much this right. way that people can go to and kind of enjoy, even on the weekends, let alone year round and throughout the week and whatnot. Yeah, it's a sweet idea. I think you're going to be busy. <laughs> I hope, man. I hope. Oh, God. Well, it's a town, to... a movie. I mean, you got a lot of things on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a, a, it's a big plate, but it's overflowing as well. You know, I, uh, I'm trying to keep it all on, but it's what keeps me fueled too. And I, I make these deadlines for myself because I think if I say, well, I have a movie premiering on August 20th, that prevents me from, just kind of sitting on the movie for three or four years and going, oh, yeah, we'll make it when I get time or when I get more money or et cetera, et cetera. But in reality, I got kind of got a fire lit under me, and it's going to get done. It's it's just going to be a lot of work. That's awesome. What When do you think you're going to – what's your target opening date? Uh, Well, so I, I someone asked me that initially, one of the newspapers, and I said August 1st, and then they ran with it like – hardcore mm. and everyone's holding me to august 1st so oh, definitely man. want to be ready by august 1st however you know august september i think either way people should be okay with it um mm-hmm. it's definitely going to be this year you should have yeah. done in october get the whole halloween theme you know really push it but shit. oh yeah definitely for he'll definitely, definitely be ready for october yeah <laughs> right. we miss october i'm done <laughs> no, I never, had, never. I never had a reason to go to Michigan. Now, whatever. Now I do. <laughs> there we no, go. This is a what? great destination. To get, like, go, go get Chad Smith, pick him up in the car, and go drive down there. And like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be that long of a drive, dude. We can get there in about twenty minutes. That's can't, fine. I well, can't it wait. About eight hours to fly there. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe for the premiere, you guys will all have to fly out here. We'll pick you up from Detroit Metro. Well, do you ever hope that that uh like I don't know, Blumhouse, you know, they see your movie and say, Hey, we want to do your movie on a higher product pro- production. Would you do something like that on a bigger oh, scale? That's a good question. Or do you like these lower independent scales where nobody bothers you? Um No, I, I think uh so it's like yes and no. So I don't necessarily go into every project going you know, I want this to be picked up by this place. I, more or less, I'm just going, what do I want to make? What, what what do I think is cool? Because I think I got a pretty good internal screening system to where it cuts out a lot of the cringiness, cuts out a lot of the bull crap, and hopefully just shows people cool stuff that they like, right? Uh, but, and the other turn... You know, I, I'm definitely open to, uh, you know, bigger studios reaching out and working together, but it would just have to make sense. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I just, I want to just jump on it. I feel like you would have to do something for me that I can't do for myself. And right now I think I can do a lot for myself. So it would just have to really make sense to. A lot of the, 
a lot of big directors started with independent horror movies, you know, Sam Raimi with yeah. Evil Dead, John Carpenter with Halloween. I mean, a lot of, yeah. a lot yeah. of uh, the, the guy who made Shazam movie came from horror movies, James Wan, you know, lower budget because you don't need a big budget for horror movies. You just got to do it right. You know, the story has to be correct. Yeah. And you can blow a lot of people away. Kind of like when people saw the Blair Witch, they made that pennies yeah. on a dollar, but they made it where you got scared. You could do that with the horror movies with the right imagination. Yeah, that's what I love about horror, man. It's like uh, there's literally a market for every type of horror out there. Every time. You know, even if you make it with a cell phone, there's people that want to watch cell phone horror. Yeah, and it might not yeah. be cell phone romantic comedy market out there, but it, it's there for horror for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, like you said, there's every type of horror. Gore. Blood. There's some the, the the original Halloween. They didn't have one drop of blood in that movie, and it scared people back in the day. Yeah. Like, really, wasn't that much blood? And you rewatch Halloween, like, wow, there really isn't a lot of blood. There's some killing, but you don't see yeah. a lot of blood. And when you could do that, that's storytelling. I love, Halloween. I love Halloween. That's one of my favorite. That's one of the first movies I ever watched as a kid. Like I remember watching some of my scary movies. So it put me in a, a place of, oh damn, this is. There's a lot to take in as a four-year-old, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, I had my mic muted. I've never been a fan of, like, the suspenseful, I don't know, for some reason, like, the jump scare stuff, I've never been a fan yeah. of, but, like, the old-school horror movies I've always been a fan of. I just don't like the what jump about, scare stuff for some reason. <laughs> creep show? You ever see creep show? No, I don't think so. Oh my See, I've goodness. never seen any movies, man. No, it's bad. Creep Show. Come on, they're, they're different bad. stories, and they kind of got, got the humor horror. I mean, Creep Show. We'll have awesome. to watch Creep Show with you, dude. Creep Show is the vibe that I live off of. I love it. Oh, it's a TV series. No, it it's was like a movie. A, it's like a movie. Yeah, it okay. came from a comic, and then, and then it's a movie, and then I think um, Shutter does a. Or no, is that Tales from the Crypt? I know Shutter does some series. Eric knows his horror movies. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was happy to have him on here. Creep Show. I'm gonna look it up because I know Shutter does something. Creep Show says yeah, 1982. I think Shutter just did a remake. Yeah, within the last or something like that. But the, the remake wasn't bad either. It's just you know it's not the original. Oh, it's a black and white one. Or maybe those are just no. pictures. Yeah, I think those are just pictures. It's it's yeah. killer, dude. But you have to check it out. Yeah, I'll they have this one scene show. where. Uh, like these people get buried in the sand and then they just get left and then the water starts rushing oh, in. And they they're like zombies that kinda they go back and yeah, all the water full down. Of seaweed to go after the people that left them out. Dude, it's so you just have to check it out. It's awesome. Yeah. Creep show, it's on the list. I've got it up here. In the <laughs> yeah, Creep Show is also um, a, a TV series too. So I was right on Shutter. Because Shudder's a pretty good streaming service if you like horror movies. It's all just all horror. Oh, that's the one that they have nothing but horror movies? Yeah, Shudder's owned by AMC. It's oh, okay. one of their... If you get AMC Plus, Shudder comes with it. You can get... You, so you see it all. Oh, sweet. So yeah, Nate's probably a subscriber good, to that. They got some pretty good originals. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you probably don't have much time to watch movies right now. You pro you're super busy, it seems like. You know, I don't, I don't watch a lot of movies. That is, like, you're right. But I also, I just don't do that in general. It seems like every time I try to watch a movie, I either get tired or I fall asleep. And it's mm -hmm. like, so it, more often than not, I'm watching, like, fails on YouTube with the kid, you know, just kind of, like, passing the time. But uh, yeah, a lot of people will hit me with these, like, horror movie questions. And I only know the, the core horror movies that I really, like, you know, grew up with and go back to and revisit. And, you know, a lot of them are the core movies that other people know. So I can answer some questions, but people will hit me with these, like, obscure, like, you know, uh, questions from these horror movies. And they're like, you got to know your knowledge, man. It's like, <laughs> how? How? <laughs> you can't. There's millions of horror movies. I mean, it's almost <laughs> impossible. Right. I mean, we all know the nightmares and the Halloweens and the Fridays the Thirteens, and you know, we all right, know the yeah. big ones, the easy ones, yeah. Yeah, but there's like you said, there's just so many; it's hard to keep up. 
of how many they are, especially now with the streaming services. Everybody's got their, you know, piece of the pie. So you don't even know what's good out there anymore. Like, have you seen this horror movie? No, I'll put on the list with the other 20 that was recommended to me. You know? <laughs> the other 20. But I did go to the movies to see The Black Phone, and that comes out tomorrow. I saw it last week, and now that's a that's a pretty good horror thriller movie. I was really impressed with The Black Phone. Is that the one with uh, like Ethan, Ethan Hawke? Hawk. Yeah, Ethan yeah, Hawke plays that, that kidnaps the kids and stuff, but there's a lot of it's like Silence of the Lamb, It, and, pa- and uh, all like mixed together, and it's like it was done very well. There's actually a great story in it. It's like you got to watch the whole thing. You just can't walk in the middle of it because each thing that happens in the movie matters towards the end. I'm like, wow, right. they they were smart when they did this. Yeah, when he when he got back from watching that movie, he was raving about it. Oh, dude, I've seen <laughs> a bunch of bad freaking movies, you know, except for Maverick. That was great. But I was having <laughs> like 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 when I saw Jurassic World, like this is a piece of shit. <laughs> Me and my wife walked out. <laughs> you know, we walked. We walked out of that movie, this Jurassic World. Then we go to the Black Fall, low budget Blumhouse, and it was like, wow, this is good. And that was a low budget compared to a hundred fifty million dollar Jurassic World. I think Black Fall costed like five million to make. Good storytelling is good storytelling. It always needs to start with the story first. Yeah, Doesn't that's matter what you're saying. Doesn't matter how much blood or not you put in a movie. The story has to make sense. And, or, right. or you make a movie where you just go bonkers, just fucking go crazy. You know, if you're going <laughs> to go crazy, you go crazy. Yeah. But if you don't have all the special effects and all that special stuff, you've got to have oh, a really yeah. good storyline. Oh, yeah. Keep people pulled in. So, dude, with this yeah. horror town, do you have, like, a whole team of people helping you? Or, or is it volunteers? Or who's helping you out with this? Yeah, uh, it's really just been me. Uh, sometimes my fiance, she'll you know be able to help too, which I appreciate her for. But we have three kids, so more often than not, you know, she's unfortunately babysitting. Yeah. Um, I'm heading up there uh, today. I'll be up there, just kind of like painting and cleaning out rooms. I, but I did post on Facebook yesterday. It's the first time I've ever asked for volunteers. I just feel weird asking people for help because. Uh, I don't know. I just I feel like this is my burden to handle, and I shouldn't have oh. to like give other people like, "Hey, yeah, pick that up, and can you put it over there?" And it's how to shit outside, anyways. It's like, Makes sense. Well, there's because then people who help always want expectations from you. Like, hey, remember when we helped you? We want in free or something, right? <laughs> yeah, they want something with it. You should put in a like... theater and play just pure horror movies in a theater on your lot. Oh, that. Oh yeah, cool. no, there's a theater room. There's oh, a theater, theater room. room. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Eric was only black and white ones. So we'll probably do. Uh, <laughs> we'll probably do the whole uh, whole genre of them. Dude, Nate's gonna make Eric put his house up for sale today. <laughs> <laughs> at the, at the, at the least, Eric's planning his next family vacation. Fresno, up Fresno. Yep. Uh, one time at a theater, they 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 were playing Friday the Thirteenth Part Six at midnight, and. It was like a big party, you know, before all you have is Rocky Horror Picture Show that did like midnight shows. Friday 13th, part six, or you can see any other Friday 13th there. I mean, everybody's dressed up as Jason and, and or, or, or Freddy Krueger going to this event. I mean, that was fun. It's like a it's like one of the first original cosplay that you see at Comic Cons. I mean, yeah, you can't yeah, beat actually, that. Yeah. Getting dressed up at the theater with blood on you, fake blood with machetes. Cops want to arrest you because they don't know if it's a real weapon or not in Fresno. Because, you know, you know, it's Fresno. You know? You got to be careful when somebody walking around with a machete. Cops yeah. don't know if it's a real weapon or not. It's Fresno. It's Fresno, baby. <laughs> but the whole environment's fun. So I can imagine going to your town. You got the little theater with horror movies. And just the environment just sounds up my alley. I hope it is, man. I hope people dig it. Honestly, I, I want people to be able to come here, bring their families, and hang out and just kind of chill. Are you going to have? Is it going to be kind of like a uh, like a ski ski resort where you have the major, like super super scary stuff, and then you have stuff that maybe people just want to go there and watch a movie or? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be like, you know, anywhere from 10 to $15 tickets, something cheap to get in. Mm-hmm. And then people would have the museum. They would have the, 
Uh, I'm trying to get an arcade room in there right now. They'll have the theater. Um, they'll have a collectible store, like a little gift shop, etc. And then planning on having you know a bunch of different events throughout the year. Um, Sweet. Like a, a annual yeah. witches meetup. So it's just all witches stuff the whole day. Oh, and then man, there's dude. hotels on the property as well. So really, I guess people could technically stay and maybe like a whole little vacation and never leave oh, the property. Yes. We'll figure that out too. Ghost tours? Man. Eric's booking his <laughs> yeah. plane tickets. 2 a.m. ghost tours. There's beating on everyone's doors. Wake up! Dude, that Perfect. property's so old, too. There might be even ghosts on the property. I mean, it might be That's a haunted. That's what they say. They, no, they, they, do, they really do say that, and I'm going to get cameras out, and we're going to film like a documentary-style ghost hunt overnight. <sighs> Man. But it's i'm excited i don't know what i'm uh i'm gonna go into the rooms or if i'm just gonna do like ghost adventures and make one guy go down in the basement while i'm like up by the cameras like wow this is crazy but we'll see i don't know oh there is there a basement there there's a basement uh across the street but i don't think we have access to that building anymore but inside the actual uh ones we do have access to there's no basements but there's like a lot of back rooms where they also put the haunted house stuff at Mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll just walk through the place and things will be tipped over for no reason they said and uh they, apparently they've seen like a, a man in black type character so i don't know we'll see it's a lot of good stuff that i guess i'm uh, interested in checking i out. love your uh, determination because i'm sure there's people out there telling you you're crazy to do this because you know the market <laughs> will say you know not everybody's into this kind of thing so you're shrinking the market for certain kind of people so people taking chances like this you got to admire the determination to do this because a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people are telling you you're crazy to invest your money into something like this. <laughs> but you're like, fuck it. This is my. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate that. You know, nothing's uh, about me is really traditional in the sense of how we get by it. So, you know, uh, we make money off of horror movies. You know, I don't think this is really a bad investment. I think this is up my alley. But to somebody that's, you know, more part of the normal crowd, I could see that. They've called me. Um, yeah, they, they call me crazy. I've heard some people say, like, you're going to ruin the place with the black paint. And I'm like, well, respectfully, it's been there abandoned for the last 30 years. The paint and the building is <laughs> probably not even going to be there in the next 20 years because yeah. of the weather just naturally tearing it down. So really anything, we're going to put some love into this you're and painted. get it back running. Exactly. Right. That. You're painting it. Doesn't you, if, somebody, if you don't like it, you sell it, somebody's going to repaint it something else. So the paint doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Screw those people. For real. And I'll just say, too, it's really sad driving by that place for the last 20 years or whatever it's been and seeing it so run down because I remember it being so cool and full of life and full of people. Yeah. And you could Happy pull in there. Energy, yeah. yeah. You could watch. I mean, there'd be like a huge crowd sitting there watching like a gunfight, a cowboy gunfight, and it was the coolest thing. Then you could go to the tr on the train ride and see a gunfight there, it takes you through the woods, and then get out and go to the gift shop. I mean, it was an awesome, really cool location. And then just to just drive by for the the rest of my life and just see it closed and nothing yeah. going on. It's really sad. But so, yeah, when I saw this, man, I'm like, this is like a dream come true. It's really cool. I think that's a lot. You know, I didn't realize it at first. Uh, kind of accidentally happened. But I think that's another reason why people are really into this and this kind of took off on its own is, because a lot of people share childhood memories. And for the last 20 years, just like you said, um, the picture of that place being closed up is almost like a visual representation of your childhood years and you can't access them anymore. They're basically yeah. gone. Like it was good and now it's gone. It's closed up. You're never getting it again. But with it opening up again and you literally get to put your foot the same exact piece of dirt that you put it 20 years ago and walk around the building and it's, you know, I think people are like, man, this is going to be alive again. And it's going to be just like when I was a kid. It's going to, you know, and, and now I'm going to have my kids, kids now with me. And now you yeah, exactly. scare the shit out of your kids. Yep. Come on, kids. You're scared. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a little horror themed now. You know, it's a little bit more black paint. But other than that, you know, it's still the same building everybody loves. It's really, we're just trying to put some energy into the place. That sounds so cool. I might be one of the people that never leaves. <laughs> I'm just gonna be like, where like, are I think the light switches? There's a guy sleeping in the gift shop. I don't know. So. Yeah, he's okay. 
It sounds like a pretty cool place. Oh, what about food? <laughs> you can have a restaurant there. Uh, we're trying. They did have a restaurant there at one point. The building is still there. It was the hall. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a food license myself, so I'm trying to work on that. But in the meantime, I'm probably just going to do like food trucks, so that people, way people can Ooh. kind of have a little bit of a choice. Yeah, um, and then it helps kind of the food trucks locally too get some money and just good business for everybody around. Randy's. Randy's yeah, right Randy's next door. Food trucks. I'm telling you, food trucks make. I don't know how they do it, but they make some great ass food. Oh, yeah. They do. They do. Yeah. Especially the, the taco ones or the, like, the, the taco, burrito ones. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> don't get me hungry, man. <laughs> I what know. About... I'm starving now. 747. I'm, I'm hungry. What about that haunted <laughs> caboose that's there or the haunted train car? Do you have access to that? Yeah. So that was actually Eisenhower's, President Eisenhower's real train car. When he came to Michigan, he did like a little tour. He came on that train car, apparently, and then he. He left it here, donated it either to the people that owned the uh, the property originally, or they acquired it somehow. But that technically is a legitimate presidential, you know, train car. And the paint that's kind of on it now, um, the way they've done it up is a little. Eh. So I don't oh, know. Wow. Maybe we put a little bit of love back into that. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that get. Train car a little of bit. terror. It's got the so much history. Really cool. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's a historical piece at this point. I'd almost like to see it kind of uh maybe even just like the trim pieces touched up with a cream color and mm-hmm. uh, make it look nice. Yeah, that's cool that you have access to that too, because I've never been inside of that either. Oh, you're I was gonna that's too scared, gonna. man. It's too scared. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't wait. That's this is awesome. I gotta pull up some more pictures of this place. Do you do you remember going? Oh, so you said you didn't go there when you were a kid? No, uh, uh-uh, no, I never was able to go when it was uh, when it was running. And then you know, I know they've tried to revamp things, and uh, like I, I believe even within the last ten years, they tried to do the gunfights again and stuff, but it never really came back to its full potential like it was back in the day uh, uh, apparently but i've seen pictures and and uh <laughs> stories and someone told me to try and get that paul bunyan thing back too because they miss it oh it's not there anymore no but they like literally gave me a location of where it is and i'm like i don't know how the hell to get. that's like an 800 foot statue dude i mean obviously not that big but oh, it's i have i have a 22 foot car hauler if you ever uh is that what it would be? Do you think that would that probably yeah, I think that would work. Thing. Yeah, we could strap him on that thing. Is that His dot head com? Falls off, like, oh! <laughs> hey Chad, is that dot com correct? I'm typing that in and I'm not going into the website. Nate Thompson video dot com. Why is yeah. it not working for me? It should work. Yeah, Nate Thompson video dot com. Here I'll put it in the private chat. Boom. Should have it now. So are you familiar with the old, it's like down the road a little bit, but there was an old dinosaur yeah. like thing. Oh. Yeah, I've never been there either, but I still drive past it uh, even today. And I, there's one dinosaur out front still, mm-hmm. you know, all covered in like uh, overgrown bush and stuff, which is kind of cool in itself. The prehistoric uh, forest yeah. used to be called. Yeah. Oh, I went through that when I was a kid too, but I don't have, I really don't have a memory of that. I, I remember going there, but it wasn't, it didn't stand out to me like the Cowboys shooting each other did. <laughs> well, yeah. he's, he's cool, dude. He's wearing an Iron Maiden shirt on his website. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw Try that to be selective them. with them. Only choose the best. Oh, do you mind if, I wanted to do that too. Do you mind if we play some of your stuff from your YouTube channel? Oh, sure, yeah, no, that's fine. Because uh, me and Spooky were watching some of it yesterday and thought a couple of things would be cool to play on here. Yeah, then well, Nate, some of your if favorite you ones, Nate. Out, Chad, you could copyright them for showing your stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you can copy, copyright strike me. Uh, what were you going to ask him, Spooky? I was just going to ask him which uh, videos on his uh, YouTube channel are his favorite ones he might want to highlight. 
Oh, shoot. Well, the dead record. Yeah, the one I wanted oh, to play dear. is a trailer, at least get the audience involved with. I think the, the trailer, I really like the trailer. I'm cool with that one just because, uh, yeah, no, I like the trailer. Uh, Call to Fruit, the original one, is like kind of have a, a little sweet spot to me, but the audio is not the best. I kind of learned from my mistakes in the past. <laughs> yeah, play the trailer. Let's see. I can thing. play the Call to Fairs trailer. Yeah, let's let's play that. Let's see. Share. I don't think of me and my men as a cult, Mr. James. Rather, I think of us as a group of individuals with beliefs, a subculture, if you will. Do you believe in the devil, Mr. James? <laughs> That's quick into the wicked. <laughs> Appreciate I love that. The old, yeah, I love the old school font and everything, man. That's sweet. I'm gonna play. Yeah, I don't know. You're trying to keep those vibes relevant still. I gotta play this trailer because this was the newest one, right? Yeah. The dead record. A single vinyl record. A really good voice. Yeah, I know that guy. Here it comes, All music that woman singing that always like always adds a little creepiness to it. Kind of like the insidious movies with that that kind of singing. I love it. <laughs> oh, when creepy. they did like the tiny Tim stuff. Yeah, yeah no, like yeah, yep. Yep. So okay. Chad, would you say that his horror movie is better than the one I made? Uh, <laughs> since he's my guest, it? yes, I will. Yes, it's okay. definitely better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. <laughs> no, man, this is gonna be awesome. I'm I'm excited for that. The uh, that's what you could do is in the theater room, just play your movies. Yeah, yeah, no, we could. I kind of wanted to do like the uh, the old vintage movies, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure we could throw a couple in there inside. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is cool that the the stuff that is on your like right here, the small town cinematic video videography. It says Monroe, Michigan. It's just like, oh, yeah, he's right down the road. Oh, yeah. I think that was, like, literally my first video I put out. And, I, like, it got uh, one of my first. And I was like, like uh, yeah, I, it's nothing good, obviously. But it was just some shots of the town around the area. And people locally shared it. And I was like, dude, there's an audience for this video stuff. Yeah. I'm glad I kept going with it because... <laughs> Yeah, we actually have a friend in the chat room. Uh, Ro his name's Roach. He is actually going to school right now for videography. So he asked earlier if he had any advice for him just going into it because he's just getting started with it. Um, See, he's in school now for it? Yeah, he actually signed up for an on I think it's an online course. And um, he's using his GI Bill to take this videography right. course and they're sending him like a $7,000 camera and all kinds of equipment, a MacBook pro and like they're setting so, them up. Good. I would say, I would say this, learn your, um, composition, your framing of shots, make sure you can frame your shot perfectly, no matter where it goes. And then once you know that you're perfect, because all that, all that it really matters on is if you can frame a shot correctly Mm -hmm. to get from the beginning because if you can and you know what you need to look for like put them in the right third put them in the left third 
you know, don't cut his head off, leave a little bit of space. Uh, if you can do that, then really all you need to spend time doing is shooting stuff on your own. You don't need to listen to anybody else. You can take, obviously, if you, uh, you know, you have questions about something, you know, and they're like, this is how you do this or this is how you click that button. Perfect. But I'm telling you, 10 out of 10 times, as long as you know just how to frame something, you will learn way more and get way farther ahead just going out and shooting something and then trying to edit it and then learning about like where you messed up at and what you need to do better on the next one and then mm -hmm. doing it better on the next one and then continuing th that formula because, um, you know, it, it's just like any real skill. You know, they could teach you how to weld, but you're not going to really be good at it until you just kick your own ass and then go, yeah. hey, you know, I'm going to weld myself and put out a couple pieces. and On the drive but, training. Seems like he's got the the drive, dude, and that's the the biggest thing too. Other than the really the composition, because once you run into one little error, if you don't got the drive, you'll just give up and then go do whatever you want, play a couple yeah. video games, and never come back to it. Exactly. Yep, he said full film school, full sale. So yeah, he's, hey, there we go. That's a good one. He's ready to rock and roll. That's, that's cool, awesome. man. Uh, what was I just going to ask? I had something I was going to ask him, Spooky, and I can't remember. Mm. Mm. Uh -oh. Not good, dude. We froze up. <laughs> no. we're, 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 we're still half asleep. <laughs> yeah, so where do you please. come up with all your ideas for your movies? Do you, do you dream them, or do you just twist them uh, like, oh, man, this would, this would be good? What's your inspiration to make them? Honestly, um, they just kind of... They, they hit in a way. Uh, so I'll just be, for example, painting some trim at Horror Town. You know, not I haven't done it before and it had an idea, but just for example, you know, I'll just be sitting there painting and I'll go, man, you know, I might see a bucket or something and I'll go, man, this would be cool if, you know, what if maybe they're, this guy's carrying heads around in a bucket and then what type of era, time era would this work in? Well, it would kind of be cool if he was carrying heads around. And here, I'm just freestyling right now. Be kind of cool if he was carrying heads around in a bucket, like 1950s area. So maybe he was like a butcher at a shop, and he was wearing the old butcher thing, the um, you know, the the Stop. garments for the butcher. Yeah, and he's carrying heads around. Uh, <laughs> maybe he's like he drives around in like an old blue Chevy Nomad. Uh, and then what could be his reason why he carries heads around in a bucket? Well, maybe he's a butcher, but he's also uh some type of killer for hire or maybe he just has a fetish for killing and then what does he do with all these heads so maybe he goes and he takes them and he puts them on a wall at home so now one of the investigators that are onto his crime uh at some point during the movie we'll have a scene where the investigators walk into this room and it's just a bunch of heads on the wall almost like halloween masks so really it's just little stuff like that like <laughs> i'll see a bucket I can start. imagine somebody go, going up to Nate. So what do you do today? Oh, I wrote a little thing about having a bucket with heads <laughs> <in>. <laughs> Whoa, well, okay, okay. Just a butcher yeah, no, with a, a bucket with heads in it. My my life is becoming uh, almost cartoonish lately. I had a phone call with a gentleman the other day, and he was uh, it was for the museum uh, that's going in at Horror Town, the Horror Museum. And he was like, yeah, I'll have 25 skulls at the end of the month from – uh, I think he's like Argentina or something like that. And he's like, then I got a bunch of rib bones and femur. And this is all legal, but it's completely legal, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's oddities and uh, by law, you can, as long as you're not shipping to certain states, you can buy stuff like this. Whoa. But I'm just like, dude, I literally am calling people and buying human skulls now. And like, yeah, if I could have told my younger hey. self, like, so there's... hey, put down the Matchbox cars. Listen to this. Something's going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay, so uh, is that a reveal that when if I'm going through this horror town and I see a skull, it's like a this is a legit human skull? Oh, yeah. Everything's going to be real. Oh, man. 100%. <laughs> 110 percent yeah. Dude, when you're a kid and you're going through these places, you're like, oh, that's all, that's all fake. That skeleton, that's not real. That's no. fake. Well, hopefully mm -hmm. nobody goes missing going to this place. Whoa. Yeah, I'm just person. like, great news, new addition. We got a brand new skeleton. <laughs> yeah, really. That wasn't there last no. week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, 
Yeah, everything is going to be real and legit, and you know we'll have like wet specimens and dry specimens, and um, oh. a bunch of basically when you walk in, man, you're going to be like, this is literally a horror museum, and I dig it. Hopefully, that's what people say. Cannot and wait. so far, you have nobody in this town like going against you, like you're just horrible. This you, you're bad on people. You're bad on kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, there is, and I'm sure there's even probably more behind the scenes that I don't know about, but um, I have the lease and the LLC and the nonprofit license for the museum, so really, at the end of the day, it's just opinions, and, you know, they're more than welcome to come pay their money and visit, too, or they don't have to. You should let them bitch, because it's like free publicity, you know, people (laughs) love hearing other people bitch, like, like, oh, publicity for my stuff. Right. Yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, it they're is. like, "Wow, this place is that bad? I want to see it." <laughs> exactly. exactly. Any news is good news when you're trying to get something started. Yeah. God, I'm jealous. I, I am. I'm jealous. You better be Eric, because man, <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to be there every day. Listen, I never had a reason, <laughs> except for you, Chad, to go to Michigan and stuff. Now I do. Yeah, exactly, man. And there's He's hotels on site. Giving me a site. destination. Always you know, let me stay at his house, eat breakfast there, and then I go to the place. Yeah, man. <laughs> or there's, you know, hotels on site. Hotels on site. <laughs> and I want, I want the best room. I want the most haunted room. There's a, there's Randy's barbecue right next door. So you, you're gonna Ooh, get Randy's barbecue. awesome barbecue. Yeah, man. Food trucks. Yeah, I think the possibility, you know, hot dogs, but but instead of a hot dog, we need the shape of a finger with blood on it, with ketchup. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could do a lot of things, you know, like like spaghetti. You could say it's spaghetti brains. You know, That's make a good it idea, interesting. Man. Have a have a skull bowl and have have spaghetti in it, so like you're eating the brains. I mean, dude, you could go all out. You ever I been? Mean, to I would pay for a, this a point, horror. You might as well just get skull caps. Serve them. Skull cap. Bloody Mary. Yeah, like serve you know, uh, blood. ice creams and real skull bowls. You know what I mean? Like the top of the oh, skull is cut in half. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, this isn't the prop. This is a real one. Yeah. <laughs> There's like, <laughs> damn it, <laughs> got me again, uh, dude. Have Rose you ever had... to know how big the town is? Oh, um, uh, I don't know the actual how overall plenty. size. Yeah. He also asked if it could be found on Google Maps. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Stagecoach, right? stagecoach stop, Onstead, Michigan. I'm gonna pull it up too. <laughs> Enzo skull cap salsa bowls. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. that's a nacho idea. nacho bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, we had I don't I think it was at school we had like a sensory sensory uh, what do you call that where you had to like put your hands in these boxes and then guess what you're t- what you're feeling. And oh yeah, like yeah. this one feels like brains. Ooh, that's cool. That would be kind of oh. cool for kids to do. If we could get Oingo Boingo to get back together and do a horror sh- a horror concert at their place and a dead man's party, <laughs> should, should oh, be hard. man, that would be top notch. But I know Danny Elfman will never leave Hollywood now. Chad, I'm so <laughs> sorry to interrupt you, man. You were about to ask Nate a question. Oh, yeah, Nate. I was going to ask you if you've ever had any personal paranormal experiences before. Seen any lights in the sky or a shadow oh. person or anything like that? Go. Yeah, so I there's two I guess I'll, there's two circumstances that kind of stick out to me. Nothing too crazy, right? But there was one time uh, at my buddy's house where they uh, this is probably around 2009 2010. Uh, he warned me for a while that you know his family was haunted by a basically a loud bang. Like he his family was haunted by a spirit, and it would let them know they were there by a loud bang upstairs, almost like like a 300 pound guy jumping off the, you know, top bed of a a bunk bed, right? Like, that loud, earth-shaking. And I'm like, no, there's no way. You guys bullshit, like... And uh, I was there one night. We were watching Grown Ups or Grown Ups 2. We got it on a bootleg DVD. I don't know, whichever one came out around 2009, 2010. And we were watching it. We were making these god-awful brownies. We didn't have the right ingredients, so they were, like... They were there, but they just weren't the consistency of what a brownie should be. No pot, by the way. I should mention no, no <laughs> so, real brownies. Real, no, brownies. yeah, no THC brownies. Uh, and then we're just sitting there, 
my buddy's falling asleep or he fell asleep and then me and another friend are wide awake and we hear this god awful the, like the loudest bang i've ever heard come from this, uh like right above us and then i heard uh like some pounding like steps like someone almost like someone jumped and ran down the steps and it scared the uh i mean dude Scared ain't even a word. It terrified us to the point of where we thought somebody was in the house because we heard the steps. And, uh, it, it, it I mean, it, I don't even know what to say. It was nothing. There was nothing there. So we were just, uh, hmm. still to this day, I don't know. You know what I mean? And then a couple years ago at my own house, uh, I was sitting there with my, I, believe I had my kid in my lap. It was later at night and, you know, she was crying and, I was just kind of get her to to nap or just be chill so we can go to bed. I was sitting on my computer desk and I was looking at my window. My window, it was an older house at the time, and uh, the window shade was like almost like one of those things you pull down in the teacher's room, like the map. She pulls it down and she locks it into place, and it like it rolls out. Well, that's kind of how the window shade was. It wasn't regular blinds. It was one of those. It, it pulled and. It locked. So the only way to unlock it is you have to pull it down a little bit more and then it unlocks and releases itself. Well, it was later at night and I was just sitting there with my kid and we were, for whatever reason, I just started staring at it and the damn thing shot up, like rolled up right in front of me. And I'm like, all right, may, like, under my impression, you have to pull that down to get it to disengage. So the only thing it could have been is maybe once in, you know, a, a coincidence that this one time it's ever happened in the history of this thing being there, I was staring at it, and it maybe it just gave way. Maybe the uh, the locking me mechanism just gave way for whatever reason and rolled it up. That's pretty crazy, uh, dude. Because it's like a rat. That's like a ratcheting system where it's it's got to move past a certain point for the teeth to move past, and then it, it'll exactly. allow it to move. So it's exactly. Like, so it, it's almost like it had to be pulled down had to, to get it to, to roll back up. That's crazy. So, and I've heard, you know, bangs and noises in that house. But as far as like my two distinctive experiences ever, it was those two for sure. Well, those are pretty good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Nothing I've been outside. Admiring your Nothing. shirt, the Dead Record 3D t shirt. I like the colors on the word dead. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's Thank got you, merch? Yeah, he's got merch on his website. Oh, he's got a shop and hell. he got a shirt that said 3D t shirt. So I'm like, huh, let me check this out. Dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice and simple. Sense. Dead in 3D. <laughs> Straight to the point. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know you had merch. I have to pull that up. Yeah, he's got a bunch of shirts. Uh, you could get a collector's edition ticket for his premiere movie. He'll uh, sign. And he's got a Hortown t-shirt already. Awesome. Oh, man. He's got a skele got a pumpkin in the front. Oh, yeah. I did see the oh, Hortown yeah. t-shirt already. That's sweet. Thank Good. you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this. This is a cool project. And to be able to tour the place that I used to go to when I was a kid. Oh. I mean, I'm going to hear that a lot. a podcast from his area. I wanted. I almost wanted this to be at the stagecoach stop, where I could just bring all my microphones and we could just sit there. Oh, Maybe that's what was. That? Yeah. No. yeah, but but I mean, I want to see in its glory once he opens it up. You got to yeah. do a show from there, Chad, so we can actually yep. see it in its you know, from the prime. tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd I'm be cool awesome, that. dude. And, and you can yeah, dress up. We'll put some blood on you and stuff. You can. Yeah. Be a zombie, yeah. Chad. I'll bring the whole studio. <laughs> there we go. That would be oh. awesome. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Oh, all of us fly out there? Oh, man. There you go, Eric. See, book your plane <laughs> tickets now, man. Get them cheap while you can. Scary Palooza. Scary Palooza. How <laughs> far away is Michigan from New York? That's probably a lot of hours, right? I am going to New York next year. I think 13. 13 hours? I could do that. Yeah, man. See? Wife's family in New York. Why, why, why would I want to stay there? Just Uber over here real quick. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> stay for the stay for a night get scared to death have some barbecue <laughs> can you no, tell I'm them all about the barbecue <laughs> i mean my god so so are you gonna premiere your movie inside your town 
I mean, are you are gonna have it where it's up and uh, running so that people can see it there? Yeah. Um. It, yeah, it will play there. It's gonna the first premiere is gonna uh well, the premiere premiere is gonna be at the River Raisin Center in Monroe, but okay. Uh, Probably the week after, I'll have it showing at the at Horror Town, and I'll probably run it for maybe two or Chad, three Chad, you going to go? I'm putting you on yeah, the man. spot. Yeah, Monroe's really close, so, <laughs> I mean, it's it's no big deal to just drive over there and drive back home, so, yeah, definitely. And Chad will buy everybody popcorn inside your movie. Whoa, 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 <laughs> yeah, oh. easy, easy, easy. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Popcorn's on lim in limited supply right now, I hear. $20 a, bowl, uh, $20 a, a popcorn bowl? <laughs> yeah, it's going to cost me $150 to buy I went to the popcorn. theater the other day. What was that? I said, for popcorn, I paid 20 the other day when I went. I was like, dude, I get oh, it now. Man. Get why nobody goes bucks. here. <laughs> yeah, 23 criminal. bucks for one popcorn and one soda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we need to go in the business of popcorn, sounds like. Yeah, and when you That's get to the insane. bottom of the bowl, it's just a fist that punches you in the face, too, and tells you how stupid you are for spending the money. <laughs> it's all about Dude, the there is, there is nothing worse. You get a bowl of popcorn, and they take it from the bottom, and you get all that seed, and you're cracking in your teeth. That is horrible. I was like, come on, man. I paid for butter and stuff, not seeds. <laughs> I paid a premium for this, man. For twenty three bucks, I want a foot massage while I watch. I could have bought a, I could have bought a gallon of gas for this. For oh shit, yeah. <laughs> oh. man, awesome dude. So, what do you get? You're uh, finishing up with the this podcast, and then probably going right back to work, or? Yeah, What's yep. I actually, like? I, I was on the way. I got a late start to the day, so I was on the way to the stagecoach. Now, it's about an hour from where I live, so. Oh, wow. uh, 10 o'clock came close. I found a, a nice little church to pull over in and chat for a little That's bit. Cool. And then, yeah, it's just about about uh, painting and cleaning for the next, I don't know, 12 hours. And then probably come back a couple more days and and so, do it. But at some point, it'll be done. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You got a horror movie to horror town, and you're pulling over and doing this show from a church. That is awesome. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. there's a priest somewhere looking out the window in that church going, it's that demon boy out there again. Yes, for me. Somebody give my holy water. <laughs> Lord be with you, Father. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. You should go in and get some holy water with you. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Yeah. Might have to. Yeah, I go to come back with third degree burns. I'm like, all right, guys, did not work the way I wanted it to. Uh, yeah, that did not work. Turns <laughs> out yeah. it was gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> He's just smudging the car after your interview. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So when, when you do your movie, do, do you like have an ad to, to find people to be in it? Or is it people that you kind of know that you use a lot of your other movies? Like, like you know, like some, some directors, they use a lot of same people they use in other movies to put in their ones. What's your yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to build that team now where I could keep putting them into different movies. Um, you know, I've I've already acquired a few people that we're using again, uh, like for the, the guy that played opposite of me in the dead record, he'll be in it. Uh, the creepy girl in the dead record, she'll be in it. And then the creepy girl. Uh, pretty, and that, that's Madeline Malice. Uh, and then Kenny Urban, uh, who played the delivery guy, will actually be the, will be playing the Reaper. Kenny Urban's a professional wrestler. I do a, uh, like a lot of filming with Rhino, who's an old ECW wrestler, and he has an, uh, a wrestling organization in Monroe called IWR. So, you know, for like the last year, I've been watching these guys, and, you know, in reality, wrestlers are pretty good at acting, you know. Yes. Uh, they're good at cutting promos, and they know how to take bumps. So they're already – wrestlers are really – like the perfect acting slash stuntman combination. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it, it, pretty much any time I've ever had to work with a wrestler, it, it, it's been, you know, pretty cake. So I have that team that I'm building now. I'm still looking for more. I'm sure, that, you know, we'll have eventually a, 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 a cast and crew that we go back to which on a bigger scale. Um, but for right now, yeah, I got about five or six people that I trust pretty regularly with things. And you can start making some of these movies at your town, you know. You can make your horror oh, yeah. town into a movie. Like, you you come visit, but you don't leave. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's so we're gonna film some of the Soul Reaper there, and that, and a they do get to leave, but you'll see in a sense why it's why it's messed up. It's gonna be fun. That's cool too because people can visit the filming location. Yes, yep. and be part of the movie, kind of be part of the yeah. experience. And you don't have to pay for a studio, right? Because it's it's your own place, your own property, so you save a lot of money by doing it there. Right. Yep. Yeah, you're getting two for the price of one. You're getting a, a horror town and a filming location. That's awesome. I know. I just kind of go hand in hand with myself. It's... I can already hear Eric. He's like, he's already booking plane tickets. I'm telling you. <laughs> this stuff is exciting. It's fun. It really... It's like getting out, just, you know, putting yourself in another world in a way. But it's all horror and stuff. I mean, it's just. Yep. I bet you my daughter will love visiting because, you know, my daughter's 15 now, but she's been watching horrors mo- with me since she was four years old. Mm-hmm. Nothing scares her. Yep. That's how my daughter is, too. She's she's afraid of the Mothman, but other than that, she's pretty, she's pretty good for uh, any type of horror movie. And I think where the stagecoach stop didn't really take off, like you said, where they tried the, the gunfights again, I don't think kids are as into like the Western thing is kind of like its own niche where horror, Mm -hmm. everybody is kind of into that. I mean, way bigger audience for horror movies and stuff like that than, than the Western. I mean, Westerns were big back in like the, you know, the seventies and eighties and, but you're right. You get nowadays, you know, kids, you ask who Clint Eastwood is and they're not, you know, they probably can't tell you. Unfortunately, and that's a, a damn shame, but yeah. Because westerns were the early superhero kind of movies. That was the thing yeah. back then. Now yeah. westerns became like superheroes. But like you said, paranormal's been there since the 40s, 50s, and 60s, 70s. It's always it doesn't been hot. die. Yeah. You know, it never dies. I'm mean, looking how many People fucking shows there are. Vampire. You know, you got a good story. People will come. That's right. Well, man, I want to respect your time. I know that you want to get to get back to work and stuff like that and it's only heating up as we talk so (laughs) definitely appreciate your time and thanks for my car window to save me yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah the priest is dude priest is flying out of there are you okay brother (laughs) (laughs) well i admire your guts and balls to do something like this where your town because a lot of people will not do it they'll be like no way you're taking a good chance and i think it and I want it to be successful because I never had a reason to go. Now I do. Yeah, I appreciate see? that. Already pulling people from California Hope to see over you guys here. There. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you're going to see me there. I'll be there for sure. I can't wait, dude. And the premiere, when do you think the premiere is going to be for the movie? Uh, that's going to be August 20th at 7 p.m. at the River Raisin Center for the Arts in Monroe, Michigan. August 20th. Sweet, dude. I'll. I'll be there. It's right down hey, the road. Go. <laughs> if wait. somebody buys your collector's edition ticket on your shop website, is that an actual ticket to get into that theater? Because it's yeah, yep. Okay, and yeah, you you get a sign. So man, yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, we have them limited to a hundred, and then there's like a, a special, uh, like a little event, um, a Q and A type thing for any of the collector's edition tickets after the event. Yeah, oh, cool. I'm looking at your ticket right now. What a kick-ass picture! Got the skeleton, uh-huh. limited edition. That's a badass Appreciate ticket. It, man. <laughs> that. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for pulling into the church and yeah. hanging out with us for a while. It was an awesome interview. Really appreciate Thanks, having Nate, the conversation. Man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you guys and everybody. Hope to see you guys too. soon. NateThompsonVideo.com yeah, to learn more about him. Thanks a lot, dude. Out, Thank you, guys. See you, buddy. Hey, buddy. Later, man. Great guest, Chad. Awesome, dude. Hundred yeah. percent, man. Oh. Cool I'm so jealous. <laughs> I know, dude. You're. <laughs> dude, I your always seat, dreamed like... of of owning my own horror or my own uh, movie theater and doing horror movies at midnight again. Bring people back dressed up. There's just something fun about dressing like how I love Halloween. All the dress ups. I wish Halloween was like all year round. In my opinion. Yeah, dude, I wonder how many people are going to show up in costume. Yeah. Wow. It's going to be like a it's going to be like a thing for families where it's like, "Hey man, can we go to the horror town again? Can we go to horror town?" 
and, people, and, kids are going to be asking to go to it. It's one dude, of those... Think about the balls you got to have. Say, uh, you're buying this area. You're buying these acres. And what are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm turning it into a horror town. I mean, people must think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> to, to, to do that, you got to have the balls and determination to, to do uh, that. It's a lot of time and money invested. You're not talking about just opening up a little shop. One little shop, and that's it. He's talking about like a town, like an old Western a thing. That's town. A, my God, you gotta, admire, you have to admire that because it, it, it's his money, his investment. You know, and I hope it works out well. Oh, me too, dude. I'd, I'd love nothing more to see that whole parking lot just full to the brim of cars. It'd be awesome. It's a so big you dirt do parking something lot like that up here in the Seattle area because the properties are just too fucking crazy to do that. But I've heard in Michigan that they want people to buy this stuff to build it up, to bring people back into the area. Oh, yeah. You know, they need it. Yeah, this place has been, like you said, it's been abandoned for like 30 years, and it's just like every time people drive by it, it's just like, man, I wish that place was going again. And now it's just going to be the whole place is going to be a horror town. I cannot wait. <laughs> That's cool. It's got a, He's going to have a theater room. Yeah. There's hotels on site, you know, like little motel rooms. It's a it's a awesome location, and like I said, you, you got Randy's barbecue next door, and he's gonna have food trucks there, and one stop shop for the whole family to stay the whole day. You know, one of the funnest things, like going to Disneyland, is if you stay at a Disneyland hotel, you got the whole, you, you know, you got the Mickey Mouse people, you got the restaurants in there. To do that in a horror style restaurant, you know, people dressing up as ghosts and stuff, and serving you food with, I mean, that just. <laughs> It's going to be great. How can you not like it? <laughs> yeah, Roach, I think so, too. I was thinking maybe it would be cool to have a big inflatable screen or something or just a permanent screen that just stays there and then just have a drive-in. Oh. The ideas are endless. <laughs> it is because drive-ins are a dying breed, but if you have a gimmick around it, like a horror kind of a thing, you know, they could work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the food idea with the... The different, like themed and food. Easy like, things to do, right? A dead finger fingers. as a hot dog. Uh, uh, eating <laughs> eating spaghetti in a in a skeleton bowl like you're eating a brain. I mean, yep. you, th yeah. those aren't hard stuff to do. Yeah. Man, I'm excited for it to open. We should open up a fun meet council. We could do one. Do a town. We'll pick up. We'll all pick a Midwest town and. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, don't I know wish how I had more eat. time on my hands. I want to go over there and just. I'd love to help out getting that place going maybe this weekend if i have some time but it's just such a short drive i could just go over there pick up a broom and or whatever he needs help with yeah i'm I can't... curious you should do one show from there you know when, when it's actually open so oh i definitely will yeah you could do like progress reports like as they as they grow and as they That's improve a good idea. it and build it up you can even run ads on here for them Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. I would definitely do that. It's just I don't have too many listeners, but <laughs> for the listeners I do have in Michigan, yeah, like uh, Christina Townsend, she just said we'll have to go out there too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where you gain a lot of new listeners, right? You're going to an area, they see you, like, who's this Chad Smith guy? We got to check him out. But Chad, the I mean, whole you got a handsome made... crew, right? You got Spooky and Sunny, the handsome West Coast people. <laughs> what more can he ask for? Gotta have Chad, the, whole, California the whole time that Nate was talking, I was thinking about, um, you know, some of the other Lindsay. Michigan paranormal friends that we have had on the show, like mm -hmm. the Ghostbuster guy. Yep. yep. Oh, so he I'm, was good. I like so him. I was just thinking, you know, why are they not collabing on this stuff in some way? Yeah, they just probably don't know each other. Like me and Nate, this is the first time I've talked to Nate. Mm -hmm. But um, power of the internet, we can bring people together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big Willie, Big Willie's gonna have to go out there and hang out with them. And who doesn't love some Big Willie? <laughs> Live with Big Willie in Horror Town. I, my eyes may have been deceiving me, but I believe I saw that Big Willie might be jumping in tomorrow night. What do you mean jumping in? Coming in and saying hello, hello to us again. Yes. It wasn't just a one-time thing. Really? Mm-hmm. Sweet. Well, that's good. We need more of. We need more Big Willie. I've been trying to tell people. I mean, 
Boom. Look at him. <laughs> Just look at him. Take it all he's, in, guys. He's made for that hard town. Take it all in. <laughs> now that's a it. leader. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, actually, yeah, oh, you yeah. might scare people off. Follow him anywhere. He's designed for a Game of Thrones town. <laughs> Game of Thrones town. He's going to have to wait for that one to come around, Tom. It's Vikings town. Oh, you know, New Zealand's got that little the Hobbit section, that little oh, Hobbit, Hobbit town. Ta Hobbit town, yeah. Well, dude, that's the thing with this horror town is he can do themed weekends where it's yeah. like, Ooh. this weekend we're doing uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Game of Thrones weekend. I, or I like that he's going to keep part of it, uh, the Old West. I've never seen an Old West haunted town. That That's why I was asking that. That I've never, I've, I, I don't even think I've even, even seen anything around Halloween that's Western haunted, like an old saloon type. Yeah. House. Well, True. I'm gonna have to get a camera over there then, because it's an old west. I mean, when you walk through this place, it's big enough where it looks like you're walking through a real town. It feels like you're walking through a western town. It's all it's got dirt floors or dirt. There's no paved roads mm -hmm. or anything like that. Feels very western, old school. Yeah, that used to be yeah. fun about going to Sacramento. They had that little old town, Sacramento, where it's like cowboy town. That you got the mm -hmm. the sidewalk is all wood. Mm -hmm. It looks just no. like Kerman, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Let me see if I can pull up a street view. Kerman's oh, old. Found, where, found, where Eric's from, that, that little town's old. Kerman, yeah. I found more pictures, guys. Yeah. Big pictures. Yeah, I'm planning, I, want, I, do, I am planning to go to the Harvest Festival in September in Kerman. Let so me know. Like, I'll go. I used to miss that Harvest Festival. You always hear ACDC and stuff, and you go, <laughs> you always hear the, because carnival workers, they yeah, love right that metal there. music. I, I feel like I'm at home. See, I don't think he has access to this bill. I think this is the Golden Nugget across the street. Oh, that's wow. a Golden Nugget. That's a casino, isn't it? Oh, yeah. See, the Golden Nugget, or the Old Nugget. Oh. Well, I think it used to be called the Golden Nugget, but they must have changed it to Old Nugget Lodge. But so, yeah, I don't think so, he has access to that building. So Nate owns like every every piece on that property, like every building. Uh, I think it's just a lease, but yeah, I think it's the whole complex. Like, um, this is the parking lot. This whole gravel area up here. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Yeah. Right here is the motels. And then, like, this is all shops. This is all shops. And there's, like, a courtyard right here where they used to do the the gunfights. And then, I don't know. what. See, I've never been back to all this stuff back here. I don't know what any of this is. But he's where got was all the railroad this track? Too. Is uh, that the track around it? Or is that a fence? It seems like the track went like this. Maybe it wasn't a real railroad. Maybe it was on wheels. Huh. Or maybe it was on, like, tires, you know? But Yeah. I remember it kind of going like this, so maybe it maybe it was just on the road and it went around. But when you're a kid, it feels like you're on a real train. Maybe that was yeah. it right here. But see, he's got access to all this property, and he can he can do haunted weekends where you drive your car through here and people run out of the woods and scare you. Ooh. That still goes on. That happens every year. It's like 20 bucks a car, and you just drive through, and people are hidden in the woods and jump out and scare you. But I don't think they had – I think that's all they offered was just drive through with your car. But now it's going to be like drive through with your car, and then at the end, get out. There's a gift shop. There's a haunted theater where you can watch horror movies. It's going to have the whole, the whole setup, so – I'm excited. Gonna have to come out, man. Gonna have to get some plane tickets. God. <laughs> we need Why? to get a bus, Eric, and start driving people through the west side over here if they want to be scared. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm sure it's not that expensive to fly to Michigan because what well, I mean they probably need people to go there. See that thing oh looks my cool. God, right look there. how creepy that is. Oh man. Yeah, the oh, country towns. The country towns out here, 
to a Texas Chainsaw Massacre weekend or something, you know, and it's oh, never, Haunted Bridge. Never seen that bridge before. I'll see. I've never seen this. Must be in the back. I've never seen this part before. Never knew there was a pool there. Oh. Huh. See, I've just been up front. Like this is where the up front by the parking lot is. Oh man! And then you guys could fly out first floor audio. He could do his music there, his horror music. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Lee? I see him in the chat. <laughs> oh, this must be. See, I don't know what any of this is. It almost looks like that's part of the motel or something. There's a kitchen that and stuff. God. Whoa. Here we go. Here we go. Look at See? that. Looks that was some like... fun. Oh, man. Yeah, he's got access to all these buildings. So it's all going to be like that says the dance hall, saloon. Like, I wonder if you do that cool. sign, get that saloon back up there, keep the saloon sign, but just make it haunted. Have a have a have a ghost Jesse James or a ghost Billy the Kid or something. <laughs> yep. Now this see this kind of stuff right here is creepy to me. Where this old dilapidated, run down log cabin looking things, you could hide all kinds of creepy people in there. Zombies. Zombies. There's just so much you can do with it. I know this is part of his building or his what he has access to. Old chapel looking building. I didn't know they used to have they used to have like a petting zoo looking thing looks like. But yep. I'm excited, guys. I had no idea there was a pool back there. Oh. Mm. Oh, and paint the water like his blood somehow. Red lights. Ooh. Yeah, see, they used to do. Or it was like a whole act. I wonder if there's an act on YouTube. They probably get taken down. But yeah, there'd be people crowded everywhere, and then these guys would just start arguing, and then they'd break out guns and start firing cap guns at each other. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. I'd like to know if he has access to this building. This big line dancing. Yeah, oh, they could do like guy. a they could do like a Michael Jackson thriller dancing. Oh man. <laughs> thriller. Thriller. Oh, see there you go. There's a skull in the water. <clears throat> Old fire truck. <coughs> oh yeah. I'm excited. I'm just sitting here looking at old pictures now. But yeah, going to be fun. Go to natethompsonvideo.com to learn more. It's going to be pretty cool. What do you got going on today, Eric? You were up early, man. Yeah, up early I'm up, uh, for today, I'm actually doing my show at 2, 2 p.m. Pacific time today. Because after this, i got to do a couple... Couple of runs I gotta gotta go do, and then two p.m. I'll do my show. So you had time yesterday to get a, a show prepared for today. Well, see now, see I don't I'm not taking the kids to school and all that, so I have a lot of time. It's easier to get stuff more prepared. So I had my stuff prepared before the show I did at night. Mm -hmm. So when I was done with the show, or when I'm done with the show last night, I could just kick back, watch some TV, and go to sleep. Like well, this morning, see, there's no kids. I could be here at seven. Right? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm used to you being like, okay, I gotta go. You know, now my wife, uh, her new position, she works from home. Perfect. So, and 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 you couldn't ask for a better timing because you know gas price is so fucking wacko. <laughs> I'm saving so much money on gas right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because gas is just outrageous. Oh, and I, the federal. Oh, we might. For three months, drop the federal. Price. Come on, eighteen. Yeah, you cents drop forty nine cents, and the gas company's like, "Well, since they dropped forty nine cents, let's raise it forty nine cents." Come on. Yeah, I heard that they're making record profits right now too, so that's that's nice to know. At our expense. Jokes on you guys. We just stay home longer and have interviews with horror film directors. 
instead of driving places. Well, they're interesting. They really are. You know, uh, on my channel, I interview a guy. Named, his name was um, Mark Corin, and he made a, a a low budget horror movie called The Hood Man. Now, honestly, the movie wasn't that good, but but I admire them taking a chance using their own money because he uses his own money too. And you're you know you are taking a chance. Not a, out of out of a, out of a few successful horror movies, majority of them bomb. So you well, are taking a chance, but yeah, but sometimes a low budget horror movie can make you a lot of money. You know, mm -hmm. if you watch those Blumhouse, you know he like he'll have a movie that comes out, they make twenty million, thirty million, but it only makes them for like a million dollars. Yeah, you know, you don't need a lot of money in a horror movie. Shit, the read uh, the Halloween they redid in two thousand eighteen only costed Blumhouse company eight million to make, and the movie made over a hundred million. Holy smokes. So, you know, horror movies, you can make big profits because they're so little to cost. You just got to do it right. Well, nothing would make me happier than, than to see his video just take off big, and then he can fund this horror town and just put gobs of money into it and bring all kinds of people to it. It would be awesome. I mean, look at the horror movie I made. There was no budget, and you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're all on the edges of seat on can't talk on the edge of our seats for this 2d animation that's coming out is that do we have any more news on that is that finalized or it's uh it's supposed to be uh uh, uh where i get to take a, a full look at it at the end of today and tomorrow you know if i need if i feel need some revisions but i mean come on i'm mean, honestly 2d animation what kind of revision i'm gonna you know it is what it is and, and then, <laughs> oh, and then if, about if, it. if it goes well i'm gonna probably premiere it probably saturday probably saturday because i'm watching elvis on friday and then go well, from there you know it's gonna be three minutes what a life it's gonna are be you three a fan minutes. eric are you a fan of robot chicken i love freaking robot chicken hey there's a guy it. somewhere i seen him floating around on facebook a while back that makes action figures of people if you could get an extra figure made of you and Connor and do robot chicken version, <laughs> oh man, bobbleheads. Well, you know, Bobble hey, you, you never Connor know. Already you know? has I'll, some of that stuff. Once I release this, I'll see what you know what people think of it. You know, because not people like us, we're open to like animations, two Ds. But there's, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't care at all. And, you know, Eric, one of my favorite things you've done recently is show us the behind the scenes in the studio there. That was yes. awesome, man. <laughs> for the members. That was awesome. Oh, man. man. Thank you for that, actually. That was great. Yeah, me and Spooky When I got to see night. where you hang the Jedi robes. Oh. <laughs> this was literally, I'm serious. When we, we bought this house on a short sale a while back, you know, and, and this was literally just a, a little extra big uh, storage room with no no window at all. The window you saw in that video, we got that put in like three years ago. And to get that in there, I had to dig a freaking big ass fucking dirt out to be able to put a window in. And there's some big ass rocks and stuff. And I hurt my back doing it. You know, and, uh, you know, small, but, you know, you know, you it make it awesome. work, right? You make what you mm -hmm. have work. And I love your collection of toys. Oh, I, yeah. Those. Those are my those were my when I was in that bubble head phase, you know, the original bubble heads and you're it's never cool, too man. old to have toys. No. No. Nope. You gotta have fun. But you got the X Wing hanging on the wall, right? The X Wings on the wall, because I had two X Wings, one upstairs and one down here. And you know, and these lights that I use for the screen, they're only forty dollar Amazon lights, you know, and they work, they kinda help. Because sometimes if you don't got that lighting, you know, the black will just. And then now and one person goes, oh, I see what you're now. I get your video when the curtain fell down. That thing is on tight. I go, yeah. That was a crazy you know, day. I can't, you know, <laughs> it's on tight. That day was mm -hmm. nuts. Because I knew you weren't lying. I knew you weren't you know? trying to fool us. Oh, absolutely. That was total legit. I found a yeah. promo video for him. But one day... One day, uh, uh, it's all gonna come out. Some studio, <laughs> some some studio, some company's gonna gonna wanna uh, sponsor my channel and get me a real studio. Yeah, oh, man, we're oh. working on Discovery Channel to sponsor you. <laughs> That's right. Can you imagine what we 
what you could do if you had like a real studio cameras and and actually try to make a a, um, a higher notch movie. Mm-hmm. I think I I would just be in heaven. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna play this and see what he's see what he's got. There's nothing official about this, you understand. We're just talking off the record. But sometimes you have a feeling about a person that you know very well that either he is capable of killing somebody or he isn't. It's just a feeling. But occasionally I found it has a definite bearing on the truth. I like his style, man. That's awesome. That dude is too cool. Yeah. I'm gonna put Just his, having fun, you know? You got to admire that. Put his link in the chat one more time for his YouTube channel. Oh, I'm excited about this horror town. I'm going to be over there all the time. And we got the okay to to bring some podcast equipment over there and do a live on location episode so that's that's sick too it's going to be fun so he has a youtube page so is it, is it just like 3 minute little video clips and stuff on his youtube page um for the most part yeah i mean he's got some full length stuff on here and what's his youtube page called is it called Nate Nate Thompson, Thompson? Horror Nate Thompson, Nate, Nate Thompson video. Nate. I put the link in the chat too. Oh. But um let's see. This is the one we watched yesterday. He does he does like commercials for people too. He did a food truck commercial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's talent. <clears throat> There's a glass jar for a dispensary. I want to subscribe to his channel. There we are. Behind the scenes making of the, the call. Dead leader. record official trailer. Got some wrestling stuff like he's saying. Oh, the cult leader. This is his whole video is on here. Seven minutes, 36 seconds. Friends gather for a routine movie night only to be interrupted by a masked man with a true sense of genuine evil. Man, the cult leader horror film. Oh, see, then he does like wedding videos for people. That's cool. I like his style, man. It's, you can definitely tell that it's his own way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, that's what he could do. He could have like open up like a little small little chapel on his on his town, have people get married in his horror town, like a horror, oh. uh, a zombie priest. Yeah. And stuff. That would be cool. I mean, you could do some stuff. So they should have us as coordinators. <laughs> you put in the money, and we'll coordinate it all. Yep. Yeah, Eric's got the ideas, man. <laughs> hey, man, shoot him some ideas on his email. He'd probably appreciate it. He did like the food idea where you're eating spaghetti out of the skull. Mm-hmm. It does, because uh, you know, spaghetti noodles looks like a brains in a way. Yep. You know? Oh, look remember, at the, remember that old Faces of Death video where yeah. they were eating monkey brains? Because they say if you eat a monkey brain, it makes you smarter. Oh, I don't really? know if that's true or not. I never ate a monkey brain. Probably never will. I wonder if that dude worked there forever or something. He looks familiar. No, when I lived in uh, uh, Maryland... My family, we used to drive up to Philadelphia, or not Philadelphia, but in Pennsylvania, and they had one of those trains where they did um, Jesse James reenactments robbing the train station on that. That was pretty fun. 
Yeah, that's kind of what this was. You would get on a train ride, and you'd think it was just a regular train ride as a kid. All the parents knew what was going to happen, but yeah. you just think you're on a normal train ride, and then all of a sudden this cowboy runs up, and he's like trying to rob the people on the train, and then another cowboy comes up, and he's like, yep. hey, leave those people alone. And then the train stops, and they get out, and they do a gunfight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That stuff's fun. Yep, my grandparents took me over there for that. And then this train place also did Thomas the Tank Engine stuff too. That a top, that a train looked like a Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh. Oh, see, this is. Let me pull it up again. They're having campfires there. There's a stage area. Oh, we gotta get an Oingo Boingo reunion there. <laughs> Uh, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Call Danny Elfman. And say, hey, come on, man, come on, one more time, one more time. Let's you get never the know. Dead party out. You never know when people hear that stuff like this is going on. They might just want to be a part of it. Oh, that's cool. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, man. What is this? Like an old? Oh, it's like a funeral parlor. Yeah, then with an open casket. He Look should do live that. funerals there. <laughs> live funerals? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> first come, first serve. Be the next be the next uh dude laying in the just, <laughs> just have an embalming station there you can walk through. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what is this room? Ah oh, man. That's just so cool that he's got access to all this stuff. We always wanted to break in there when we were kids just because it was so abandoned. There's nobody ever there, and you're always driving by. It's like, man, we should just drive in there one of these nights and just walk through there. But now we're going to be able to legally. That is exciting. It's right around the corner too, right? I mean, that's August is coming up. Yeah, when he said August, I'm like, this August? That's pretty soon, man. I wonder if he's got access yeah. to this lake behind there, too. There's a whole lake and a big wooded area behind it. Oh, you could do that creature from the Blue Lagoon from that lake and have somebody mm-hmm. come up. Hey, you, uh, oh, do the, one. the guys have a show tonight? I don't know. Somebody was asking about that earlier. If the if the UFO garage has a show. Here we got to play Anthony's song while while we're just chilling. Yeah, I'll look up and see if they got a show. UFO garage. Oh, I don't see a show scheduled. You know they were taking a little hiatus to get some stuff planned out, so it might still be. Oh boy, that's gonna be stuck in my head all day now. Hey, what song? What song did we see Lee singing? talking about we were gonna have him ask if he could do it on, his, on the guitar though it wasn't piano oh that was i'll never remember it now i oh i put yeah. it in my notes i can't remember it wherever you will go by the calling don't you get a myers when somebody could remember so many songs i mean how do you remember so many lyrics i just i can't you know remember what? one lyric if, in a whole song if he's like me, which I bet I bet he is, um, you learn so well. I don't know a whole bunch. I probably know fifteen how, how to play them. I don't remember the words to the song until I start playing it on the guitar, and then it all just falls back in. It, it, I've it noticed, just, even though I can't, I don't even know what the hell I'm going to sing next. But as soon as I play that chord, mm-hmm. it just comes out. It, it, it goes. Yeah, I'm the same way, dude. I've noticed the same thing where I can't sing a song unless it's playing, and then once it starts playing, I somehow I just know the lyrics. 
It's weird. Are you are you a shower singer? Yeah, dude, I'm a shower singer. I'm a car singer. <laughs> Definitely. Especially on the way to work. You're trying to get amped up and get the day started. I'll play some music and sing to it for sure. Time is an illusion. In the middle Time. of a snowstorm. You know, sometimes you got to sing 75 that. miles an hour uh, in, a, in a blizzard. Well, <laughs> allegedly. That's never happened allegedly. I got pictures. Yeah, see, Lee, I, I videos. Lee, I was going through your videos yesterday, and I, I was listening to one of your rehearsals with Ray's. Ray's, right? Oh, he's ready to go. All he has to do is pick up his guitar then. He's got the, uh, he, he's got the sampling. He's ready. It sounds like he's ready to come on right now, huh? <laughs> what? Get off that guitar. He's like, wait a second, what? Russell like, Rock says, I love to grow in the car. That sounds gross. Oh, growl? Oh, growl. I thought it said grow. Yeah, he sent oh. me a video one time of him growling. I'm like, is that singing? What is it? What's going on here? Getting, some, getting out some aggression. I don't know if you missed it earlier, Chad, but... He said no. I don't think we highlighted the fact that Brasselhoff was, I mean, I, I think it's kind of breaking news. Brasselhoff let us all know that he was thinking about starting a podcast. I totally forgot that until I, yeah, and look at his, he's got a logo. Hoff's news. live show. Yeah, Brassel, do you want to give us some insight yeah. on what's going on with that? What's, I'll, what's going I'll on? I'll subscribe, man. I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. it. Drop the link. Maybe one of you guys would be his first interview on his channel. We could do that. We dropped quite a bit of breaking news on this show, to be honest. He said, not thinking, doing. Yes. He's doing a podcast. Dude's committed, man. Is what's, it his, on the... what's his theme behind his uh, broadcast? Is it like weightlifting or something? Uh, he says, waiting for the laptop to come in, StreamYard, and ready to go. Oh, he's man. Gonna, he's going to come in hard. Well, if you need any help with StreamYard, let me know. Must be one hell of a laptop that's coming in. Yeah, I wonder if he's... We'll have very open channel where anyone can come on and talk about anything. It's just a show about, it, show about nothing. Okay. Sounds good, dude. So it's a kind of a hangout kind of a deal, more of a hangout in a way. That's how this started. Me and Sonny were just hanging out. That is our you? specialty. Yeah. And that's what's happening right now. We're just BSing yeah. with 18 people listening. Brassel, is it the same channel like that you're commenting from right now? Or are you starting a new channel? Because either way... Just drop the link so people can subscribe to it. Yeah. Where'd the music go? Need some first floor audio now. I haven't heard... See, that's the thing with sleeping. When I do now, I don't get to hear the Alien Girl music. She's on real early in the morning isn't she because you know we're west coast i think she's on about 6 a.m or 6 or 5 a.m 5 5 a.m damn this that's called commitment Man, i was ready this morning i made it for the end <laughs> there it is good morning spooky good morning. Good, morning. good morning eric from paranormal highway Good morning, Pinzer Collector. <laughs> oh, How does it always get to the. We always come to, back to Alien Girl. Good morning, Brasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chad, how many members do you guys have now on your uh, Buy Me Coffee thing? That's a good question, Eric. Let me go check it out real quick. Because what I heard, you guys had some crazy after parties after the Paranormal Chop Shop. Well, allegedly we have some pretty messed up parties. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny any happenings that happen. Come on, buy me a coffee. Load up. Website's taking a second. Oh, your AC broke, Roach. 
does it realize that it's very uh it's a hot time of the year it's the yeah, time he was telling me about working. that i felt bad for him and the dogs so they're all you know it's he's got the sickest studio that he built but he needs to be comfortable in it who's this so he's got to he's got to get that ac going oh yeah roach for sure mm -hmm. yeah he needs his own dedicated unit downstairs where it's just just cools off that one room Hey, I'd like to th give a shout out. This happened while we were interviewing Nate, but we got a buy me a coffee donation from Christina Townsend. Sweet. Aww. Thank you so much, Christina. She's the best. It's very much appreciated. <clears throat> now I have to figure out how to find only the members. So the members are... Okay, here we go. We'd like to give a very special thank you to our members over on the Chad Smith Podcast. We got my mom in chapel, Rodney Posky, who we haven't seen in the chat room today. He must be busy at work. Posky. Deanna Decon. Thank you so much for being a supporter. Jake Smith. Thank you so much, dude. He said that he's going to be listening later because he's got a really busy day at work today. Then we got Enzo Surreal. Thank you so much for being a supporter. And Terry Brown. Terry Brown, thanks so much for supporting us. I'll give you so another spooky. Give you another thank you. And I don't have the list pulled up here, but thank you for all the members that are supporting us on the Paranormal Chop Shop as well. Appreciate that. That is. <clears throat> I just pulled it up. We got three. Three gold and two silver. Awesome. And it's Deanna Conway, Cassie, Terry Brown, Lindsay Pinzer, and Zombie Tech Reviews wrote. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That's sweet. And if anybody's interested, we do have... Let me see if I can pull that up. But what a class egg Somebody zombie clicking. tech review is. I mean, just to create a logo like out of nowhere for somebody. I mean, that's. Yeah, dude. And then you turned it around. And it's already on merch. It's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what's nice. You know, I'm not picking anybody up and stuff. I can actually spend some time and work on it. Here we go. That's how you get the day started right here. Now we're done. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was going to pull this up too. If anybody's interested in supporting the show, we do have a Buy Me A Coffee account. We have two different tiers for five bucks a month. You get a shout out like we just did and also a sticker sent to the location of your choice. And for $10 a month, you get a sticker, a shout out, and you also get a private invite to an after party show that we do after the Paranormal Chop Shop where we, uh, we just hang out and it's not recorded it's not live the only way in there is to get a private invite that's right let's appreciate man, you guys anybody helping man, us i gotta say anthony kicked ass last night anthony's anthony. always a great guest to have on your channel yes he is i mean when you when you look at his videos on ufos and how much passion that guy has yeah i mean that's the real deal because the passion that he has really looking and searching for you so it's like he's doing the hard work for you he's exactly. bringing it to you yeah all these people that are like man i wish i don't have time to be outside and i wish i had time to go out there and, and watch the sky just watch anthony dude he's out there every night yeah and he's willing to invest and in, to get the right cameras for these shots and all that so you know he's got equipment yeah he's not just going out there with a cell phone we're talking psionics, cameras, all the good tech. And, it, and there's more on the way. I know he's saving up for a really badass camera right now that kind of, I think it tracks the sky. I think he can track it from inside the house. Yeah. I don't know. I might be just speaking out of my ass, but I'm pretty sure he's getting a camera that moves. Yes, he's working on all that. I mean, that's just impressive. Just, you know. And it's cool, and not just it's cool, it's cool that he has 
a wife who embraces his passion, you know, yeah. and all that lets him do this. Because you know, when you you know, when I do shows, it takes away with being with the wife and, and kids sometimes, and to have that backing from family members is a lot too. People like that should get appreciation. Yep. You That's know. Good point, Eric. You know, last night I told my wife, "Hey, can you make sure you wake me up at a certain time so I, I won't be late?" But thing is, I woke up before her because when you know you gotta get up, you notice that you get up even earlier. Like, God damn it, <laughs> I can't go back to sleep. <laughs> well, guys, oh. I have some unfortunate. What were you gonna say, Sonny? I was gonna ask if you and Spooky have checked Dim Boy's Messenger. No, I haven't. Oh man. <clears throat> Dim Boy's Messenger. Is Big yeah. Willie sending us stuff? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's so funny. Yeah, the best stuff is usually coming from Big Willie, huh? The and you know, Chad, way. it's cool that you do some readings with your sister. That's awesome. Yeah, every Sunday over on Cassie's channel, Oracles yeah. and Beyond. Actually, last Sunday, I actually woke up and like, oh, man, this show's almost over. <laughs> oh, yeah, we start kind of early for the West Coasters. Uh, yeah, we start at 10 a.m. Eastern, so it's 7 your time. Unfortunately, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun, fun way to oh end the God. weekend. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Is it over Sorry. in uh, yeah. the chat? Oh, boy. I'm, I'm trying to focus on pulling up the right song here so we can close off the show. <laughs> There's only one song that I like closing out with. And Chad, I do appreciate you letting me jump on at seven. I just, I just, oh. I love, I love these people who who take chances, make movies, and all that kind of stuff. They're just interesting people to, especially when they're using their own money to invest in themselves. You can't ask anything better than that. No, dude, you did great. I mean, you were asking awesome questions, so I appreciate you coming on with us. Well, Eric, the, what time are you going to see the movie tomorrow? Elvis, will you be back for the chop shop? Oh, yeah. Uh, that movie starts at 6.30 p.m., so you guys are at 9 now, so. Yep. Awesome. You know, I'm a, you know, I respect uh, uh, Elvis a lot because a lot of people don't understand how Elvis, Elvis Presley, you know, he grew up listening to gospel music and you know, he was very in. He was very in with the African Americans, with the music and all that. People don't realize how much he stand up and fought for rights and stuff. He was one of the original badasses that got arrested for dancing on stage when they told him he's not allowed to move his butt on stage. <laughs> I'm and now, and now look what people are doing on stage. I know exactly right. Elvis is one of the first ones that actually did all that. It broke a lot of barriers, so he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Older, you know, younger people. I wish they would actually like not just hear the music. Listen to Elvis's story. You know, we got drafted. He didn't dodge the draft. No, nope. he went in. Now they gave him the best job in the world in the military. He didn't have to go fight on the front lines, but he didn't cower away. He actually went in. Sure did. Now, I don't know about marrying somebody so young, you know, and now that's another story in itself, but, you know, that was the time. Yeah. That's just the time that he was in, you know? Eric, what time's your show today? One more time. 2 p.m. Uh, 2 p.m. Pacific time. And that's over on Paranormal Highway. Go check him out. Spooky, got any shows today, bud? You know... I, I, right now, I'm just thinking. I can't really think of any. All I can do is just say one thing to everybody. Mm -hmm. Love you all. There ain't no hate for anybody. We're all family. We're all connected. we got to remember that whenever we want to start getting mad at each other and start you know, throwing around the BS. Yep. It's all love. And if you want to come here, just bring love. Anything else, I won't be having. That's right. I back you on that. And we'll be talking about the Ohio Frog. That's all I'm going to say. Got a couple of videos on the Ohio Frog. Oh, sweet. I have never heard of the Ohio Frog, so that's going to be fun, dude. <laughs> you can have Connor with you? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Uh, well, he'll, he tries. Because sometimes if he's by himself at the place, he'll jump on. But sometimes he has to do training. 
course, he he can't, or if the boss is there. Oh, but he okay. always he always gives it a shot. Cool. Like like yesterday, he jumped on from the shop. Yep. Always, yeah. It's always cool to see his smiling and, face, man. And trust me, he he tries to come on, especially when I have some cryptids that's from Ohio. And tonight, today's the Ohio frog. Good. Yesterday was the Ohio lemonhead. Well, he'll probably call into work if he has to to make it to that one. Then. All right, guys. Well, I have to get off here and get ready for work. So it's good hanging out with you. <clears throat> make sure to go check out Nate's website and Nate's YouTube channel. Links are in the description below. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night on the Chop Shop. Yep, tomorrow night on the Chop Shop. Paranormal Chop Shop, guys. We'll see you tomorrow at 10 Eastern. Or no, we changed our time now. Midnight Eastern, which is, what, 9 Pacific. So we'll see you on the Chop Shop tomorrow, guys. Thanks a lot for being with Love us. Love you all. Thank you so much for being Love with you. us. It sound right, boys.